Hi, and thanks for watching this message video. Today we're starting a brand new series where we're looking at what Jesus taught those first followers or disciples about what it means to make followers, and we're approaching it as if Jesus gave them a recipe with nine different ingredients. But like with many recipes, making followers is hard, and so Jesus gave these guys an opportunity to be able to practice, you might say, by sending them out to a group of Jews first, or to an audience that would be most willing to listen to them before sending them out to the rest of the world. In fact, here's what we're told. Matthew 10, 5 through 15. Jesus sent out the 12 apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts. No gold, silver, or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes and sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Again, later on sent these same disciples, minus Judas Iscariot, to go into all of the world. You know that in Matthew 28. However, this first sending out was to family or to a soft audience. And so we can learn something from this in that, for many of us, the audience most receptive to our testimony about Jesus might be our family members. Now, to help make these specific apostles or these original first followers a little bit more easy to listen to, clearly they were given power from the Holy Spirit to perform powerful, powerful miracles. However, even though Jesus told them that, yeah, some of their listeners were going to be eager to accept them and their message, he also warned them that they were heading into a world of danger. Matthew 10, 16 through 22. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking, it will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Again, Jesus sent those first followers to a soft audience, to family members, and warned them that, yeah, even though some might accept it, there were going to be others who wouldn't, that it wouldn't be just kings and governors, that it would be family members that would reject this message as well. And so what Jesus was doing was preparing them for that. And I feel like you and I need to be prepared for the same thing, in that God wants us to share with our family what it is that we've come to learn about Jesus, but he also wants us to be prepared for their possible rejection. But notice the comfort that Jesus offered to them and us, and that when they were opposed or when we are opposed, he's going to give us the right words to say. We don't need to worry about that at all. And also, let's not miss the part about the preparation. And that preparation is really for enduring or being able to continue to not only be a follower, but continue to try to make followers when everything inside of us just wants to quit. And that's what the enemy wants. But what Jesus wants for us is that we would endure and that we would continue on understanding that this, this process of sharing the good news, it means that you and I have to struggle through constantly spreading it like a good farmer casting seeds and sometimes maybe not the most pristine conditions or environment. For instance, look what Jesus said about this. Mark 4, 14 through 20. The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed in the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. 
The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. And the seed that fell on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Making followers or casting seeds is hard. Some of the people that we're trying to reach are just walking a hard path and nothing we say will ever seem to get in. And then some, they might seem to accept it, but because they have poor soil conditions, they never really develop spiritually. And for some who are good farmers casting seeds out there, their evangelistic efforts have garnered them persecution, in some instances, death. But even though this is a truth, Look at what it is that Jesus said to those first followers and to us about this. Matthew 10, 28 through 31. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. It wasn't just those disciples that were precious to God. We are too. And so like what he told them in that, yeah, there might be instances where our evangelistic efforts as good farmers means that we are going to face opposition to the point of death. That's okay. Don't worry. God is protecting us. So in other words, continue to cast seeds, continue to be that good farmer, even though that might at times disrupt the peace. Meaning there's nothing wrong with acknowledging God in public. And there's nothing wrong with telling people that we'll pray for them. And there's nothing wrong with inviting somebody to come to church, even though many of these things, like these things, do disrupt the peace for some people. But that's okay. And I say that knowing that what Jesus said to those first followers was that he was paying attention to those who were trying to be good farmers, even though it might mean opposition. In fact, look at what it is that he went on to say to these first followers about this very thing. Matthew 10, 32 through 39. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. What Jesus was ultimately saying to those first followers was this. Before you go out there to the rest of the world and try to make followers, I need you to go and practice on your friends and your family first. Go and share with them your testimony. Go and tell them what it is that you believe about me and why. And know that some, they're going to accept it. And they're going to embrace your, you and your message. But some are going to reject it. But that's okay. Even though that's the case, keep casting seeds. And don't be afraid to be disruptive because that's what hard soil people need. So in other words, you and I, when we are thinking about followers, we need to also be aware of the fact that some of them, well, they might... They might need some soil cleanups. So we need to help them with that too. But whatever it is that we're doing when it comes to making followers, know this, it always has to be done according to God's recipe.